Welcome everybody. This is video number 53. We're going to talk about all about Earth's core. So summary time at the beginning. I want you to be able to describe, diagram, include the state of matter, as well as the heat and pressure between the two different parts of the core, the inner and the outer. So let's talk about the core. So the core is a large sphere of metal. Sphere is just a fancy term for a circle. Uh, it is the center of the Earth and it's made mostly of iron, hence why I have Iron Man here for you. In the core, the pressure increases tremendously, and the temperature there is about 5,500 degrees Celsius. And this is really similar to the surface of the sun. It's, it's just enormous. So I want to show you a quick song. Layer we'll discuss first is the central inner core in the center of the earth. A solid ball buried below the dirt. We believe it's primarily metallic iron. You can never take a trip to the inner core. Right? The heat will burn you up 9,000 Fahrenheit. 4,000 miles below the earth's crust. One down, three go, y'all. 1,800 miles from the tip top. The outer core is hard at work and it don't stop. It's busy spinning around the inner core. This steady movement causes earth magnetism ranging before the 9,000 degrees it contributes one-fifth of the heat flowing to you and me it's liquid metal that violently flows so let it settle when you're ready let me know just our hands up the layers of the earth from up for what's below the surface throw your hands up Let's talk about the outer core and let's differentiate between the two things. So the outer core here is an extremely high temperature. In fact, it is so hot that it's a fully liquid layer. As the earth rotates, as it turns around once, uh, that actual liquid iron flows and moves, and that actually causes an electric current, right? That's not unusual for metals, right? We know that from physical properties. And this actually results in the earth's magnetic field. Now we'll pick up more about this as we keep going through for astronomy. So let's compare the inner core to the outer core now. So now you're even getting higher pressure than that. It is solid this time because it is so much pressure that it couldn't move. Um, and it's made of iron mostly and nickel. And this is what would be considered the center of the earth. I wanted to show you guys, and I love this picture for it, um, is that I wanted to show you the size differences between uh, the layers that we were just talking about. Oh, that's Dublin saying hi. Uh, we've got the inner and outer core. Notice the mantle is much, much bigger and the crust is much smaller. So the part that you and I live on actually is much smaller compared to the other. Okay, now we're ready to learn about another main layer, the outer core. The outer core is a 1400 mile thick liquid layer. It's mostly made of iron, so it's really heavy. The temperatures here range from 7,900 degrees Fahrenheit in the outer regions to 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit near the inner core. Without the outer core, life on Earth would be very different. The movement of liquid metals in the outer core creates the Earth's magnetic field, which allows us to use a compass. And here we are in the center of the Earth, the inner core. The inner core is a solid layer with a thickness of 780 miles. It's made of solid iron and nickel. Oh my gosh, it is really hot down here. The inner core may have a temperature of up to 13,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than the surface of the sun. Many scientists believe it is kept in the solid state because of the extreme pressure from the other layers. Wait a minute, I'm pretty sure nobody else has come down here, so how do we know so much about the Earth's layers? Oh, the answer is actually quite simple. It's true we cannot study the Earth using our eyes, but we can use other senses. The most important thing we use to sense the Earth's insides are seismic waves that are waves of energy caused either by earthquakes or by massive man-made explosions. Timing and strength of seismic waves gives us a picture of the interior of the Earth. Seismic waves gradually bend and change speed as the density of rock changes. Another way to see the inside of the Earth is based on the analysis of rock material brought to the surface from greater depths by volcanic activity. These samples can give hints about the properties of the interior regions. Awesome! There's so much going on beneath your feet and you don't even realize it. We're talking about the core again, so describe, diagram, include the state of matter, heat, and pressure for the inner and the outer core. And then I would definitely in your notes start looking at putting all ten of these layers together. And as always, thanks for watching.